but as far as resolutions are concerned, does handle quite a lot that I throw at it. I'm going to list in the description of the video what it does handle and perhaps what it, it also does. It. It's not going to be a thorough, conclusive testing of all the different resolutions that I could throw at it, but in saying that, it does handle quite a lot. You know, more than pretty much every other CRT TV I've tried. So, thumbs up. Thumbs up to the rank for that. I'll also list the 360 resolutions it supports from the Xbox. It it probably does about three quarters of what the 360 can pump out as well. So, good performance again. Let's have a look at the menu system of the Rank Arena. Here you've got the logo going up and down the screen saying no input. Um, here you can select which video source you want to choose from. RF antenna, composite 1, 2 and 3, low res component input, XGA and high res component. Uh, here's your regular style of menu with your contrast and brightness and all that sort of thing. Some sound stuff, timer. Um, rotate, excellent. Excellent to have that option to rotate the picture. I think you can do that on all input sources. Excellent. And a degauss option as well. You can degauss the screen at any time you like. Lovely. Uh, the menu system is not really like any other TV I've had. It's pretty basic. It's sort of a just a cheapo looking menu system but it does the job and that's the most important thing so we'll go into this hd component source get that cross hatch up again now the big plus the big plus on this tv for sure is the screen adjustment options available in the hd sources these aren't available on the low res stuff but it, unless you go in the service menu the service menu will provide you with all adjustments on all input sources here we go. Here, we're in the HD component, and this applies also to the PC, the XGA connection. I'm just going to go through it and show you what it's got. Um, you've got horizontal size, horizontal position, vertical size, vertical position, pin balance, pin cushion, trapezoid, parallelogram, H Moyer, V Moyer, rotation again, um, English to Chinese, or whatever it is, Degauss, another Degauss. And then you've got red contrast and green contrast. And then there's some of those um, color temperature settings, those industrial 6500 and 9300, I don't remember which is what. But that is a bloody comprehensive set of adjustments available. And that's not service menu level. That's just standard user-based level. So big, big thumbs up to the rank for that. I mean, I couldn't adjust some of those geometric flaws before with what's here and even in the service menu, but at least they're having a go, at least they're having a crack, and it's the best I've seen yet, so big thumbs up to the Rank Arena. Uh, the one thing I don't like is that this option here, recall, I would assume that that would put the TV back into its default values, but I can't seem to um, activate it to get back into default. So if you're going to start changing any of the values, you're probably best to write them all down just in case you forget or you get sort of get a picture me messed up and you don't know how to get it back. So just write all those down. Anyhow, I'm going to show you how to get into the service menu because I had quite a difficult time finding how to do it. Uh, we'll put it on film here now so in case anyone needs to look it up and see how you do it. This is how to get into the service menu. You must use this, this button here that has a dash slash dash dash on it. This selects how many digits you can input when changing a channel either one two or three you must change on the television start accepts three so you you get it up like that you get up three digits you hold menu on the tv and then you type seven 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 on the remote and you're into the service mode like that now i'm going to show you the extra options available in the service menu we're back in this picture adjustment menu again but it's even got more, even more adjustments available now. Red contrast, green contrast, blue contrast, red brightness, green brightness, blue brightness, ABL. I don't know what that it does. It's got a picture of the Earth. Might be to do with some magnetic issues there. I don't know what it does. Oh shit, it's gone again. Now, vertical focus. 
vertical linearity, V-line, balance, top corner, and bottom corner. So even more, more options, more things to tweak the picture with. And this menu can be opened up on any of the inputs for fine tuning, and you probably will need to do that. You need to do it on every input source to get them right. The most important thing is how does it look with games themselves. It's all good and well to put all these cross hatch patterns up and this and that, but at the end of the day, it's what does it look like with the actual game running on it? Well, it's got good clarity and and good color and it's sharp, so it's not unpleasant to the eye. But it seems to have a problem with being too dark in dark areas. One of the LG TVs I reviewed in the past was similar. It's just too dark in dark places and I fiddled with the brightness and the contrast and all those red all the color contrast and brightness in the service menu and I couldn't get a satisfying picture up so that's a mark against it there let's try a different game now I'm back on trouble which is now I've rarely played it or even tried it as a game on these HD displays but does look bloody good, looks bloody sharp as, looks great. And I think you'll find it'll look even better on a better set anyway. Yeah, well look, one other thing I should point out too is the volume on this thing. Oh, you can see the volume's not up all that um, loud on the screen, but I tell you what. Fuck. This TV can sure crank out the sound, but it sounds terrible actually, so don't turn it up too loud. In concluding this video, we'll do the customary, the standard, take the back cover off and have a look inside. The back's off, and there's a couple of things that strike you when looking at this set for the first time. That's the massive speaker enclosures on each side of the TV. They're bloody huge. No wonder it makes so much volume. Pity it's not um, more pleasant on the ears. And the, there is this stabilizing bar they've put in here to connect both of the speakers. Now, I don't really like how it wobbles like that. They're just hanging from the edges of the TV here. And they've decided to put this bar on just to sort of hold them together a bit more. But I don't like how it wobbles around like that. The other surprising thing is this shielding on the neck board here. I've never seen any TV or any monitor before have shielding on the neck board. You can see here that they've put some felt like felt material around the edge of the metal. I think that's intended to protect the cables coming out from getting sort of scratched up or cut on the metal casing. But look, the bloody the wires aren't even touching the felt. They're just resting against the metal anyway. It should have the felt felt um, wrapping right around to protect those cables. So it's not not very a practical design. The other thing I noticed too is that um, there's a clamp. There's a clamp. In there it's actually um, it's actually not tight I think it's yeah it's broken it's actually broken where my index finger is pointing it should the plastic tab should be glued on now I don't know how that's broke you'd hope that it hasn't come out of the factory like that it's not going to affect any performance it's just there to hold this neck board on a bit more they'll they'll just pull and pull off and plug straight back on anyway yeah, you wouldn't hope it came out of the factory like that, but you wouldn't know. This is made in China, this TV. Fortunately, the tube, and the rumor is true, that the tube is, is a Toshiba tube. There's a bit of the label. I've checked it out, and it does say made in Japan. That's a good thing. I mean, I know this TV's got its flaws. Maybe the tube's attributable for some of that. Hard to say. I'd like to see it with a different chassis running on it. But it doesn't shake my confidence in Toshiba just yet still have a lot of faith in their abilities to make good tube and uh, you've got the um, chassis down the bottom there it's 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 pretty bloody big it's a big chassis big wide chassis and there's a board there a board with your inputs that I'm pointing straight down to so that's the internal view um, I've really got to wrap it up now so you basically got a, a TV I think it had, at its core it can display a good image but it had those geometry problems it's got issues with signal compatibility it's meant to have excellent signal compat compatibility it showed very good compatibility with the VGA signal so there are a few issues there and look in the end I don't think it's going to beat the Sony KV HR 36 
I think it's still the best HD CRT out there. As far as this one goes, I will keep it. I mean, I don't have unlimited storage capacity for all these TVs, but given how uncommon this Rank Arena is, I just can't go throwing it out yet. I might keep it for a few more months, let it have the cooling down period and see if um, I want to get it out for any further testing purposes or not. So thanks for watching this video. It's been a long one, but I felt I had to include everything that I did. So thank you and stay tuned next time for the next one. I've got a few more yet to come out. So thanks again.